Hello, everybody. Welcome to Little Ruby's Daycare Encounters YouTube channel, where we emphasize play-based learning, wellness, and research-based solutions to issues in early childhood education. If you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, you know, help us reach our next subscriber goal, which is 300, at the point at which we're going to do a giveaway um, prize. Um, my name is Dr. Brenda, and welcome to WAGE Interviews. WAGE stands for Word Advocacy for Growth in Education. WAGE is dedicated to interviewing educators from all over the world with the goal of comparing educational programs and practices. And of course, we know that comparisons can help us understand other educational programs and systems, and also reveal successful methods and, uh, methods and strategies. Um, we are privileged to have with us today an author, an advocate against bullying, a motivator of young people. She was born and raised in South Africa. She currently lives here in the United States. Our guest teaches courses in the art of compassion through her multi-sensory, culturally rich bullying prevention programs called NOCO Bus Bullying. We are welcoming Eleni Theodoro to this platform. We are honored to have you. Got it, you got it. <laughs> yeah, it's such a privilege to be part of you, uh, it, you know, part of Little Ruby's Daycare on this fine Saturday morning. So thank you for having me. So nice to have you. We do have an echo, I think, is the distance between us, you know, but we just have to cope with it today. Yes. <laughs> so, Eleni, can you tell us a little bit about your education in South Africa? Sure. So, I was born and raised in South Africa, as you know, and um, I, w I had primary school in a small town called Newcastle in, the, in a province or state called KwaZulu-Natal, which I actually teach the kids in my program about this and how to pronounce these beautiful names. Yeah. Uh, then we went on to uh, high school in Pretoria, the capital of South Africa. Uh, once I finished high school, grade 12, I moved on to do my bachelor's and my honors degrees in psychology at the University of Pretoria. And after that, I decided to further my education in psychology. And so I completed my master's program through Capella University here in the UN United States. And interestingly enough, in sports psychology. <laughs> but, wow drawn back into education and working with kids on that level. Um, my mum's a teacher, aunties are a teacher, cousins are teachers, so it's, it fits within the family. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So do you, um, do you have early childhood education in South Africa? Can you tell us how that is? Um, well, absolutely, yes. We, we have our daycare centers, just like here in the United States, that take care of children um, across all levels um, really well. Um, then we have our kindergarten, uh, which we consider grade zero in South Africa. And then um, in South Africa, it is compulsory for students to be in school from grade one through grade nine. So I think it's the age of seven through 15 is compulsory. Um, and then after that, for grade 11 and 12, there is an option for them to attend um, a community college or um, a private college, or even a technical school, vocational school, where they can learn some trade skills. Um, but I chose to go into university and i um, very fortunate that my family supported me through that long, <laughs> long and stressful journey, uh, which was totally worth it. And I believe that me getting my degree within the field of psychology is, is truly aligned with my purposeful path in helping children and their families Absolutely. too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I do have to mention that currently um, there's a pandemic. You know, we are in a pandemic. That's right. And unfortunately, as bad as that sounds, it's more discouraging to learn that there are other problems in education, you know, apart from the pandemic. And one of such problems is bullying, which you are an expert on because you have courses 
designed specifically for bullying. Right. Um, the uh, American Psychological Association describes bullying as a kind of aggressive behavior you know, that involves the intentional and repeated cause of injury or discomfort to someone else, okay? Um, how would you describe bullying? You know, do you think that the American Psychological Association does great justice to the description? I feel like they, they have described it well. Um, in my experience, I see that bullying in any form is really an imbalance of power where an individual may feel powerless in one area of their life and choose to then try and act out and try and regain power and, um, you know, some sort of social status amongst their peers and admiration um, by exerting negative behaviors. So, um, you know, and it comes through in different ways. It could be verbal, it could be physical, it could be relational, you know, excluding others, spreading rumors, um, you know, cyberbullying is huge, as you know, especially with us now being pushed into um, being more dependent on technology for our classes and, you know, being social. So I feel that they have done a good job of it, uh, of describing bullying. Um, it is a lot deeper than that. Um, often there's trauma involved when it comes to the perpetrator. So I try and have students through my programs have them understand what the bully may have experienced that led them to this path, to lead them choosing this kind of behavior, not justifying right. the behavior. We all know that bullying is, is no good. Right. And it actually has an impact on us later on in life, economically, in terms of being able to get a, a good job, and then also uh, in terms of our relationships. So it's important that we reach children during their formative years, like I work with pre-K through grade five students for the most part, teaching them about the power that they hold to make smart choices when it comes to treating not only each other, but also our adults, and our very feathered and leathered friends too. So the um, Humane Society of the United States conducted a study and they, they, they came to the conclusion that there is a direct correlation between pet abuse in the younger years and adolescent years and domestic violence later on. Mm -hmm. So it's super important that we tap into the, the um, innate uh, um, capacity for compassion and empathy within our children and help help them build the skills, the communication skills that they need, the social skills and emotional right. skills so that they are able to talk about what's scaring them with trusted adults and we can help them through the scary situations that they may be facing. Right. And it's amazing you say that about the early formative years. I do have another question along the way, which I'm going to ask you about that. Sure. But, um, I love that the American Psychological Association, you know, goes on to explain further that bullying can be physical verbal or otherwise, you know? People who are bullying usually do not initiate the bullying, you know, which means it's not their fault that they're getting bullied. And also, in addition, they cannot defend themselves, you know? And you, you did say something about um, bullying being an imbalance of power, mm -hmm. or it's an imbalance in power when it comes to bullying. So the bully is usually higher in the power hierarchy than the bullied, you know? So um, my next question is, are you familiar with anyone who has been bullied? You know, would you say these characteristics of not initiating bullying and being unable to defend themselves are accurate? Uh, absolutely. Um, I feel most of us have been at some point or other in our life, whether in our childhood or even as an adult, in a position where someone's tried to exert their power over oh. you. And, um, you know, in some cases it's subtle and in other cases it's severe. Um, you know, initially, I mean, back in the day, people just assumed it was a, a rite of, or saw it as a rite of passage, but that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Today, with technology being at our fingertips 24-7, um, we cannot get away from a perpetrator. 
you know, I know of, of students who've had their profiles duplicated and um, they're being bullied through, you know, Snapchat, uh, you know, all these other apps as well, which is very dangerous. Um, and even teachers have been targeted. But I have to tell you that our children are very perceptive. They see how we as adults treat one another in the household, in school, on TV. So it's super important that we realize how powerful our role is as role models, you know, for us to speak in ways that are uplifting and empowering. Um, watch our tone, the type of language that we're using around our children, and then also, you know, limiting the, uh, you know, the type of content, watching the type of content that kids are um, viewing online, on TV, because at the end of the day, I don't feel like our TV is uh, the best role model for our children. So it's important for us to do our research when it comes to shows that we allow our children to watch yeah. so that they are, um, in fact, uplifted and empowered through these shows. And that's what I aim to do with my creative work. Um, my series, Noko the Night, um, is... Uh, well, it's based in South Africa, the, the context, the scenery, and um, I, I choose to base it also on, on a compassionate approach to solving problems. Um, so Noko is uh, my main my main character there, the African crested porcupine, and him and his, he and his friends have these adventures, and then they have several problems that they need to solve. And um, you know, we encourage uh, people to truly look at each other and, and try and learn and be curious about what makes us different, how is that special, how we, can we work together. Um, but yes, bullying happens across the board. Retroactive studies have shown that uh, children who bully when they're younger ha actually may become bullies mm -hmm. as adults. And the same with victims. Those who were victimized when they were younger, there's a higher chance of them being victimized as adults. So we need to nip it in the bud. Yeah. So um, what about the bully? You know, who is a bully? For instance, I was made fun of at school, you know, at different levels. Mm -hmm. Because I look different from every other girl, you know, in the room or in the group. Um, it hurt you know, to be bullied until I realized um, we are all different. And it does take time to get there. So that realization that we are all different and unique and we all have something positive to give to the world to make it a better place you know and that's why we have different personalities identities ideologies you know and, and who is it different you know that's um, right. my question is is anyone who says or does something mean and hurtful to someone else, a bully? You know, is there a scale to somehow determine who a bully is? You know, the people who made me feel uncomfortable in school, are they bullies? <laughs> you know, so how do we, how do we um, understand who a bully is? At least you first have to know you're being bullied, you know, to find solution to the bullying problem. So is there a scale? Is there a way of recognizing a bully? Yes, yes. So bullying in essence is not only an imbalance of power, but the bully will target uh, certain individuals mm -hmm. uh, on a repeated basis and attack them on a repeated basis. So it's not just one time I'm going to be mean to you. I'm going to do it over and over and over again with the intention to humiliate and hurt you. Right. Okay. Threats, things like that come through as well. Um, so when I work with the kids, I have them understand there's a difference between someone that's having a bad day and someone that's purposefully trying to target a person and hurt them and humiliate them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because we don't want kids running to teachers every single day tattling. But mm -hmm. at the same token, in my programs, I encourage reporting and I call it facts. We, we report mm -hmm. the facts. If you saw it with your own eyes, heard it with your own ears, or you've experienced it yourself, come and tell a trusted adult like your teacher or the school counselor or the school nurse, um, and especially your parents. Um, mm -hmm. Explain to them exactly what happened um, and then start documenting the dates, exactly what happened, who was involved, because that information is going to be very important for the school when Unfortunately, if it does escalate, then they would need to share that information with the school in writing. So 
there's an investigation would then need to be be launched yeah. yes there is a big difference between someone being mean uh, you know because they're just being silly that day or having a bad day and someone that's purposefully trying to hurt so in other words bullying is a consistent mm -hmm. um meanness you know to someone yeah and, and that person is usually unable to defend themselves that's right. And that's why it's super important that we encourage children to speak up when something doesn't feel right or if they feel like they're being targeted. Um, one of the biggest challenges we're facing when it comes to dealing with bullying is actual reporting, getting getting you know children to speak up or adults to speak up in that case because they don't feel, first of all, they may feel intense fear because they may have been threatened or their family may be threatened. Um, and second of all, you know, that they, they don't want parents to get involved from what I've seen with some students um, because they don't want to be further picked on as a result. But the only way that we can take care of bullying is if we speak up, educate children in a compassionate um, setting as I do with my programs, and then to be on top of that and do it consistently because, you know, having one lesson about bullying is not going to make a difference uh, throughout school year. We need to consistently keep on the foreground, be proactive, keep those messages of compassion in front of our students. And even as adults, we need reminders sometimes. I worked at a school once and I, I usually, you know, I had the school invite the parents to join us if, if they're open to it. And um, when I was done with my program one day, one of the mums came up to me and she's like, you just reminded me to be nicer to my husband. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a good giggle but it really is true you know when you're stressed yeah. and you're tired and you stretch thin and it's so easy to have a tone or an attitude and just not realize how our actions are truly impacting another person it may not necessarily be bullying but you know we can make smart choices when it comes to how we treat each other right. right okay so um noko in my opinion is kind of like a superhero, you know, against bullying. <laughs> Can you tell us more about Noko? What inspired that character? Sure. So I had a good friend of mine. He was a great, uh, one of the top play therapists in South Africa. Um, she took me under her wing and she's like, listen, you need to do this play therapy course. So I signed up for the course and the final assignment was to write a story so it's a form of biblio play or bibliotherapy they gave us a case study and they asked us to write a story so the child in the case study could relate to the story and thereby open communication so we could work with them so i remember scribbling it in pencil about the story about a porcupine that shoots out his quills and um i handed it in and i didn't think much of it you know i got a good grade but i didn't think much of it and then about five years ago i think it was um, my mom was the one who reminded me of that story. And she's like, I know you've always been good at creative writing since young, so why don't you put pen to paper? So thanks to the strong work ethic that was instilled and discipline instilled within me from my dad and, you know, being a good businessman and whatnot, showing us how it's done. I worked full time in New York City. I then burnt the midnight oil doing research about each of the characters. I put the story back together again. And I knew that the story, I did not want the story to just be another children's book. I wanted it to be educational, something right. that had a positive impact. And I knew it was going to be a series. So I called it Noko the Night. Yeah. So Noko means porcupine in one of our uh, tribal languages, African tribal languages in South Africa. We have 11 official languages, nine of which are Afri beautiful African tribal languages. Mm -hmm. And each of my characters retain their traditional African name. So the mm -hmm. students learn, um, you know, how to pronounce the words and, um, and what they really mean. Um, so Noko was born, this porcupine, in, in the orange book behind me, the first one, Noko the Knight. Um, Noko here is about to become a big brother, has all these big feelings inside of him, doesn't know what to make, you know, to make sense of it. He's been an only child for so long, and then he he explodes on one of his friends, the snake in Yorka, in the bush world, and he shoots out his quills because he's upset, and then after that he has to face the consequences. And fortunately for him, his friends are very compassionate and patient and understanding and truly curious as to what happened instead of judging him, scolding him, or even you know banishing him from the group. And that's how I base the story 
at least the program on that part of the story. And also teach kids, you know, porcupines do not shoot out their quills. <laughs> in that regard too I teach them about the animal in its natural setting um, how it compares to our behavior as human beings they get to feel real porcupine quills real guinea fowl feathers and no I didn't pluck any porcupines <laughs> they drop their, their quills just like we lose our hair they drop it to right. the ground and locals pick them up so yeah. that's the short of it you know it, it was born out of a play therapy assignment and I feel so blessed to be able to share it with children right across the U.S. and really globally now that we're all online with zoom <laughs> mm -hmm. that's amazing do you think using loco as a character you know that children can relate to helps you get your message across very much so because when i first start the uh, presentation i ask them so how many of you have got baby brothers or sisters and most of them put their hands up or baby cousins and so they're able to relate to loco when he hears that he's about to become a big brother and then he has all sorts of feelings inside and then I ask them so how did you feel when your parents told you there's a new baby coming and how did you feel when you had to share your room with the new baby you know so I, I make it inclusive that way um and using the characters it really allows a whole a, a diverse group of students to really feel the story and relate to that story um and in, the, in essence, feel heard in a way through their answers. Um, so, yes. <laughs> yeah, I just want to put that up. Children can relate to, um, you know, to Noko, the character. That's right. Um, do you think bullying, and you did mention this at the beginning, but I just want more details about it. Sure. Do you think bullying is a problem in the um, early stage, as in, in the preschool classroom, for instance? where children are as young or younger than two? I don't feel it's bullying. I feel it's more of a sense of gaining their independence. What's right. mine, mine, what's yours is yours. You know, we're starting to separate from mom and dad and right. create their own identity right about the age of two. So I don't feel it's necessarily bullying. Um, but I do work with the pre-Ks and up because the story is just so sweet for them to listen to. And then they get to feel the real quills and we compare the quills to, um, cause they're very sharp, compare them to, um, how painful it can be when we choose to be unkind. So I, I changed the verbiage a little bit for the little ones so that they can relate to kind versus unkind behavior. Um, so my programs are split into two age groups. I have pre-K through grade one, and then I have grade two through five. Um, and then I, I match the, the, you know, the language, the semantics, um, according to the age groups. Um, but with the little ones, they then understand that, oh, this is sharp. When, when I'm mean, if I'm not sharing, if I'm, you know, taking stuff from others, if I'm pulling or hurting someone else, this is what it feels like and it's not right. Um, mm -hmm. I compare that with a soft touch of a guinea fowl feather. I tickle their faces. I have a guinea fowl in the story too. And then they understand, oh, and they, we do our, our, um, our slogan, quills or feather, pain or pleasure. What do you choose? Feather. feather. So I have that slogan and I have, yes, I am a knight. I choose to do what's right because we're all human. Even right. as adults, we make mistakes in how we relate and communicate to other people. Right. So I have students understand it's okay to make mistakes, but we need to try and do better next time too. And then I have them remember the, um, yes, I am a knight. I choose to do what's right. So we can choose to treat others kindly. We can choose to go and report anything that is, um, you know, any bullying that may be happening. Um, because that's truly how we're going to consistently help students through that, um, you know, learn the lessons, make smarter choices, and to empower children from a young age. Right. And um, I know that young children, because that's the age group I deal with, the preschool age range, I know they're still dealing with regulating their emotions, you know, they, um, they still need to learn the skills of self-regulation. They are trying to understand their executive functions, you know, managing their emotions, but I don't think they're bullies. But no. you did mention something very important at the beginning, that children should be taught young about treating others right. You know, the preschooler may not bully, but treat their classmates in a mean way if you don't fix that mm -hmm. and they grow up 
they go to great school, they might end up being bullied, you know? That's so true. We need to help them, you know, guide them. That's our role as adults in our life. And that's why it's so important that parents work with their schools to help um, elevate their children and to get them to understand that what's, you know, good behavior and which behavior is not quite acceptable. Um, because at the end of the day, if we don't discipline our children and guide our children um, when they're young, unfortunately, there are going to be other authority figures later on in life that may need to step in, whether it be, unfortunately, police or a lawyer. And nobody right. wants to pay for a lawyer, right? Yes. <laughs> It's work together with our schools, guiding our children uh, to make smarter choices. And if there are any you know, emotional issues, for us to nip that in the bud and to work with our children in that level, whichever therapy they may need, it's super important that we help our children through that. Absolutely, yeah. And um, children should be taught compassion, you know, and, and how important it is to treat people right. And that uh, when you treat people wrong, it hurts, Absolutely. you know. And, and they, they, um, they can relate to that because when, when they are treated bad, they hurt, you know, so we can use that um, to teach children to treat their friends better or to treat people better generally. I actually have an exercise with students, with the older students, where I can close their eyes and, and remember a time when they were treated unkindly or if they were bullied. Um, and I have them feel that pain. And then after that, I have them imagine a time when they were treated respectfully, when they were included, when people spoke, you know, friends spoke nicely to them, um, when they received a gift, for example, or support. So we compare and contrast. They need to feel that pain so they can move away that from that pain uh, towards kind and respectful behavior. Right. And um, why does bullying happen? You know, we've talked about the bully. We talked about the bullying process. Why in the first place? does a bully bully? Well, um, oftentimes you'll find that there's some sort of scary situation happening at home or outside of school um, with a bully and they're trying to control their world, their, their environment. Oftentimes they don't have the right communication skills. They don't know how to express what they're feeling effectively. Right. Um, there are other times when they have very poor role models and they're exposed to all sorts of abuse um, whether it be in the home or within the community. Um, there is a wide range of reasons why they may choose to do so, um, apart from severe emotional um, issues, as I've mentioned before, that may need therapy. Um, that's why we have wonderful school counselors and anti-bullying specialists in schools, your social workers, um, you know, and your teachers that really care and, and want to make sure that our children are, are, are well-rounded and are healthy so that they can function and get the, you know, get through the academics they need to get through. But yeah, yeah bullying is very serious. It's not something to be, you know, brushed off in any way. If your child says, I'm being bullied, stop, look them in the eye, meet them at their level and truly listen to what they have to say so that you right. can whether it is truly bullying or whether it's someone that was just being silly that day or being mean that for that day because right. as soon as you pick up the phone to call the school they're then required to start an interview process which is serious right I do want to put up this statistic I got this from PESA mm -hmm. and I'm going to leave a link below of the various websites you know dealing with bullying as a problem and also, I'm going to leave the, some links below about you, about NOCO, you know, how people can reach out to you, you know, at the end of this. So let me put out this statistic. And um, this just says that one out of every five students re report being bullied. You know, that, that's a serious problem. So bullying is something we all have to take seriously you know, and find solutions to. And so that's that brings only, me, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> and that's only those that have reported the bullying. How right. many have not reported their bully, that they're being bullied? Absolutely, yeah. So how do we deal with bullying? What strategies would you say have worked in your experience? Education, uh, support, um, having 
qualified counselors that, that are there and fully available to work with students as soon as it happens, as soon as it's, you know, it's important that we do nip it in the bud so it doesn't um, grow beyond that into a bigger monster. But the main issue, the main thing I would say is educating our children, not only in school with these programs, but at home. Right. Role model. If there's something on TV that they see that is not not nice in terms of how people are treating each other or how different characters are treating each other or speaking to each other. Pause it. Let's talk about it. Open the communication at home so we can see how can we be part of the solution? How could he have or she have treated the other character better? You know, fortunately, drama sells. So a lot of reality TV is, is out there. And right. um, I, I find that there are a lot of parents that are very relaxed with what their kids watch. Right. Um, and I'm here to tell you that you need to be on top of that. You know, don't just keep them busy with the TV. Make sure it's quality content because their brains are sponges. They're picking right. up on that content. You, you know, you have your family values. Instill right. those within your children and help guide them as they go through school. Absolutely. The older they get, yeah. it is more challenging, especially your middle to high schoolers. I understand that that's a, a big difference to, to primary school and different challenges faced there. But we start in the home, helping our children with quality content, quality family time together, quality conversations, and then right. support through educational programs like mine in the schools on a regular basis. We're bound to help our children cope better open up more and be able to attend to their needs much quicker. Okay, good. So um, there's a 2010 article by the American Psychological Association, 2010. <laughs> That's like 10 years ago. But yeah. It's amazing <laughs> that that article has, you know, some really nice facts about what we're face facing today you know as regards to bullying mm -hmm. so um the dr susan uh, swearer is her name emphasizes mm -hmm. the need for parents and teachers to intervene immediately mm -hmm. they notice any indication that either their child is being bullied or is the bully you know mm -hmm. dr susan also talks about the significance of documentation which you had said earlier and record keeping what if anything would you add to this um i do feel it's important that we take the victim seriously that we truly listen to what they're saying what they're feeling so that they feel fully supported through this process um you know, it's super important that we don't just brush it, brush it off or, or brush it under the carpet. Because like I mentioned, you know, if we don't nip it in the bud now, it could grow into a bigger monster later on. And there was a study done across 135 countries. Uh, I believe it was 163,000 students were assessed. And they noticed that, or they concluded that those who bully and those who were victimized or victims due to bullying ended up in multiple systems later on in life. So mm -hmm. mental health services, special education services, the health system, and then possibly even juvenile justice. So if we help them now, we can help them avoid that later on in life. Right. Um, you know, so it is important that we, as soon as we hear of this happening, or first of all, as soon as it happens, it has to be reported. And that's why I encourage students to speak up. You know, you have a strong voice, speak up no matter how scary it may be, because your, your school teacher is there to help you. Okay. Um, granted, you know, we have some adults that, you know, don't take it as seriously, but I'm there to, in my presentations, I, I express to the teachers, you know, thank you for being supportive of your students when they do speak up. And I have other um, ways for students to report the bullying where they don't necessarily um, have to be named, right. but can be looked into um, at least, at the very least. But yes, nip it in the bud, take them seriously, and then offer them the emotional uh, and psychological support that they need on both ends. I'm just going to write that down because that's amazing. You just said that children can report bullying, you know, anonymously. Well, yes, I actually work with a company called Speak Up. It's a Swedish company. It's an app. 
uh, which schools are able to sign up for. Um, and that is one way to encourage students to report any kind of bullying that takes place. Um, you know, their names are not mentioned, but they're able to provide further information. They're able to provide photos or screenshots if it's any bullying that's online that would then be sent to the school the school coordinator or school counselor, whoever is appointed to deal with bullying, anti-bullying specialist, and then immediately via the app, the communication can take place between the anti-bullying specialist and the student involved, and they can then start the investigation. Amazing, amazing. Um, I love that you are doing these educational courses online and in person, you know, um, creating awareness, kind of like shining a light on bullying. Thank the you. American Psychological Association emphasizes the need to provide victims of bullying, you know, with a support system that keeps them connected to school, their peers, and even home. How would you say your courses you know, that you teach have had a positive impact in educating young people about bullying? Well, first of all, my program is uh, multi-sensory. So I have music, movement, uh, they get to feel the quills, compare that to their, um, their choice in behavior, negative behavior, and then the feather, which re represents pleasure or a positive behavior. Um, and then I have, for the grades two through five, I have like a six page assignment for them <laughs> where <laughs> they need to explain what they learned with me and NOCO why it's important what they're going to do to be part of the solution so there are other activities in that assignment as well for them to truly uncover be curious about and uncover some of the reasons why they might choose to shoot up their quills um, right. when they're not feeling their best and then what are some of the activities they enjoy doing to help them cope with their stress so it's very well designed um, assignments for them which the school then sends back to me um, I'm then able to ascertain whether they really learned what I was teaching them during the session. And we also make a pinky promise <laughs> at the <laughs> end of my sessions, you know, the power of the pinky to go and teach families what they learned with me and NOCO about kindness, compassion and bullying and how we can be part of the solution. So my aim in, in designing this program was really to get the message not only into the classroom, but it's also into the home as well because sometimes we need that reminder. Students have the option of purchasing my book if one when I come you know, do the author visit for the students, um, I then autograph them for the students and they bring that home for their bedtime reading. And at the back of my book is a list of questions uh, related to the story inside, which also come back to the point of choosing kindness and compassion what and feelings labeling our feelings accurately as well it's super important to teach our kids um, a wide variety of words a range of words that um, that explain each of our different emotions so they, can, they fully feel empowered in, in expressing what they're feeling to their right. parents and thereby get the help that they need you do have an amazing program i have to say <laughs> i appreciate that thank you yes and it's it yeah me to serve students far and wide. I, um, I've worked with all sorts of school models, um, you know, online and in person, whichever way um, I'm welcomed by the schools. I've served school districts all over as well. I've had repeat dis you know, clients, school districts bringing me back to work with different groups of students at a time. So it's been very special for me to share my, not only my creative work, but more importantly, the powerful message that comes with that. Right. So students who are being bullied might benefit from individual or group therapy, you know, to create a place where they can express their feelings openly. What do you think about this? I think it's wonderful. I do feel though that it is important for that to take place consistently on a regular basis. One session is not gonna do it. So it is important that when parties are involved in bullying, that they get consistent support through both ways through both avenues um, individual and group therapy would be super helpful in helping them get insights into their behavior and the fact that they are powerful enough to make better choices in their life right i'm gonna write that down consistent support is important you know in preventing bullying That's what happens when you're your own moderator, engineer. 
<laughs> you're doing well. You're doing well. <laughs> okay, I'll put this up. And I want to say that, do you think that we should be teaching young children as, you know, as young as two years old about bullying? Do you think they'll be confused or will the learning benefit them somehow? Well, as mentioned before, you know, we changed the wording a little bit. Right. So, you know, we change it to kind versus unkind behavior for the little ones. And I do feel that that helps them understand which appropriate, which uh, behavior is appropriate and which isn't. And again, repetition, you know, just over and over again, showing them, speaking to them about it, um, letting them understand that this is okay, this is not so much okay. We yeah. <laughs> treat each other, it's nice to share. Um, not nice to bite, for example. So, um, so it is, you know, bullying I use really for our older students. Um, they have a, a better grasp of that, that terminology. Right. So in conclusion, I would like to say thank you so much, you know, for sharing your experiences about bullying and um, talking about Noko, the superhero, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as um, regards to anti-bullying and bringing the message to younger children, you know, in the way they can understand. Because if you teach them young, then they're likely, you know, not to do the wrong thing as they grow older. Okay. So um, I would like to encourage anyone out here, you know, concerned about bullying, parents, students, you know, witnesses, if you've seen something. You know, I would want you to reach out. You can reach out to Eleni because I'll have her information in the links below. You know, you can reach out to your teacher, talk to your parents, reach out to someone, you know, feel free to talk to people about um, bullying because if we don't have conversations about problems, they are not going to get solved. So it's been so nice talking to you to Eleni. Oh, and this is... This is not the end of it. <laughs> no, no, it's really been so special. Thank you for having right. me today. Right. I know it's yeah. carved out some time out of your valuable weekend, and uh, it was truly lovely speaking with you and our parents right. out there. Yeah. And I do want you to come back at some point. You know, we, we can't do justice to the topic of bullying in 30, 40 minutes, you know. Right. There's, so, there's so much to talk about. And this is a major problem that is plaguing young and old children you know, right. in the new world that we live in. So thank you so much. Thank and you, Dr. Brenda. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. A beautifully blessed weekend ahead. <laughs>